News on the vaccine and new strains of the coronavirus are leading many to COVID confusion. COVID-19, we're almost 12 months in. What have we learned about the coronavirus over this past year? And what are some of the misconceptions? What is our winter outlook? And how do the new highly transmissible strains change what our summer months look like? What should we know about these strains and how to keep our family safe? Can my employer force me back to work if I haven't received the vaccine? From new strains to vaccines to the law, we're clearing up COVID confusion. Well, joining us, Drew, is Dr. Ben Hur Lee, professor of microbiology, the Icon School of Medicine, Mount Sinai, and Wake Forest law professor, Jonathan Carty. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Good to be here. All right, Dr. Lee, let's, let's jump right in. You know, these are questions we received from our viewers uh, about what's going on. So I want to go right to the first one. Julie from St. Louis asks, can recently vaccinated people still spread the virus? I think straight out, I just want to say there's no data on that right yet. But uh, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean that you're immune the very next day afterwards. So until the population builds up to a certain sense of herd immunity, and I mean that in a good way, through vaccination, like we have on measles, um, um, we should not let our guard down. Let's not lose the battle just when we're beginning to... Right. to uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that point, that anybody like myself that's been vaccinated... I don't know for sure that I can't be a carrier and potentially give it to somebody else. So I think I still need to do all the precautions that we know that we all should be doing. Sarah on Facebook asked, can my employer insist I get the vaccine before returning to work? What do you say, Professor Cardi? Yes, um, in most states or almost every state, um, employment arrangements are hire at will and fire at will. And except for some certain uh, protected characteristics. So for example, if you're an employee who has some sort of disability that the vaccine would, would trigger as a, as a danger for you, then the employer probably has to make some accommodation for you and, and can't require it or, well, still can require it if you can't do your job um, uh, safely without the vaccine. So even then an employer could say, look, you either get the va vaccine or you can't work here anymore. Okay, uh, Professor Cardi, another question from Facebook. Can public schools insist that my child get the vaccine or they won't be able to attend school? The answer is absolutely. As long as the state legislature requires this vaccine, they can do so. And, uh, and, and parents will have to vaccinate their children. Now there are exceptions. So um, most state statutes accept, have exceptions for um, sincerely held religious beliefs against vaccines and then also Clearly, if the child has some sort of disability that makes them um, susceptible to dangers from a vaccine, most states have exceptions for those for those situations. Dr. Lee, uh, Derek on Instagram asks, uh, we are hearing all about new strains of COVID. Will these different strains render the vaccines we're using ineffective? No, you know, one or two or even three mutations are, are, are not likely to render anything completely ineffective. And maybe the relevant question in the long term is, will it render it less effective? Um, but less effective, um, it's still effective. Um, and even if you get infected, uh, it may prevent more severe disease. Professor Cardi, Suzanne from Atlanta asks, can you actually file a lawsuit if the COVID vaccine causes you harm? In the mid 80s, the, the Congress passed this statute that essentially renders vaccine manufacturers and hospitals and other people who are uh, administering vaccines immune from lawsuit. However, in order to do that, what they did was they created a vaccine compensation fund. So all vaccine manufacturers have to contribute money into a fund. And if people are harmed by a vaccine, then they can collect their damages from that fund. And they don't even have to prove such things as causation, for example. Uh, it's pretty easy to recover. I, I want to um, uh, mention, however, that overall, there aren't that many claims against this fund. The reason is not that many people are harmed by vaccines. And so this vaccine fund is uh, uh, quite robust um, because there haven't been that many claims over the years. Professor Cardi. Uh, and Dr. Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Great information for our viewers. Thank you. Thank you for having us.